Hello and welcome to One North Main BCA's magazine show, where we profile the people, places, and events that make this city, our city, great. Today we are at the Brockton Fire Department Open House. It's an annual event promoting fire safety. We'll be following all sorts of activity at this fun event. Also, we'll be going to the elections office, speaking with Executive Director John McGarry about the voting machines and how they work. Very interesting stuff. We'll be over at City Hall, where there was a snowplow rodeo send-off. Snowplow rodeo send-off? Stay tuned for that. And then finally, we will be meeting the Caring Adults team, which is part of Brockton's Promise. It's a special initiative. So, sit back, relax, and see what your community the City of Champions has to offer. So at the safe house, we have different props where we can simulate all kinds of you know, hazards. Electrical cords hanging in the sink. Uh, also tin foil inside the microwaves. Leaving things on a lit stove or you know pot handles hanging out. You know just show the kids safety and making sure that everything's all shut off and things are up to par. Um, down through here. Kind of a crouch. That's weird. I don't even have the best. So we have. This is the living room. Oh, we have a, a makeshift fireplace where you're gonna burn yourself there. Yeah? But is it real fire? Also, we have a phone over here that, when you pick it up, you can dial 911 because we have smoke vents. In each room, we can create a smoke condition. But is it fake? I don't know. I don't know. Is it fake? Mm -hmm. Could be. Because I think smoke's black. Because practice makes perfect? Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, we can create a smoke smoke condition and some panicking. So when you see the smoke, the kids are smart. They're, they're, they're getting low to the ground. They're getting low to the ground. They're getting out. Ready, guys? When you see the smoke, stay low and go. Stay low, stay low. Stay low and you go. Now, sprinklers, the sprinkler system set up. I know there was a push a couple of years ago. Um, at a statewide level to get uh, sprinkler systems um, uh, into uh, into places. Uh, what was it? What was there was uh, legislation? <laughs> there was le there was some sort of legislation out there as far as uh, sprinkler systems regarding uh, commercial businesses. Commercial businesses, uh, absolutely, they love to get sprinkler systems uh, retrofitted in older buildings. Uh, if they doing some sort of remodeling over a certain percentage, I believe it's a 50% or more remodeling. We need to update the fire systems, uh, sprinkler systems, smoke, smoke uh, detectors, also CO alarms also. Um, there's also a thing with advising uh, some uh, residential homes, newer homes, to get sprinkler systems in their, in their homes. Uh, the, the water damage, outweighs the uh, fire damage, you know, and there's no price on life, so it's, it's, it's much, much more beneficial. This event, this event's great, the Lieutenant, because these kids at a young age are learning about just simple fire safety uh, and fire activity action um, during during an emergency. Are we going to get low before? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're having fun, they're learning, and that's the best way to get their attention is while they're having fun. You know, and as you can see, even though there was a little bit of panicking earlier, they all said the same thing, get low. So they're, they may not be listening, but they're actually doing what you're asking them to. So that's good. 
Right, guys? Yes. Oh, yeah, the winter is coming. Buckle up. Be ready. 2014, 2015 was quite a winter. Why do I have the shovel in here now? It's only October. Well, let me tell you, the DPW Brockton Zone won the Snowplow Rodeo locally and went to the national competition in Colorado. What's a Snowplow Rodeo? Mayor Carpenter, why don't you tell us about it? Good morning and welcome everyone. It's great to uh, have you here with us in City Hall this morning. Uh, as we recognize uh, a couple of our highway department drivers uh, from DPW who have uh, had some great success in competition are getting ready to go off and compete at the national level. And uh, we thought it was important to uh, not just to recognize their achievements so far, uh, but also to uh, give them a showing of support before they head off to the national competition. So for folks that may not be familiar, for those of you who don't work uh, for the DPW, uh, September of 2014, we had our Brockton team competed in the Plymouth County Highway Association uh, annual plowing safety training seminar, Plowing Rodeo. And they beat out 11 other competing teams for the title that they won at that time. Now, I didn't used to know what a plowing rodeo was all about, but I do now. And uh, there are basically three phases to the rodeo competition. These guys have to take a written exam, they have to complete a vehicle maintenance inspection, uh, and then the best part is they have to navigate an obstacle course with a snow plow, plowing through cones, barrels, uh, other obstacles they put to basically simulate a real life snow plowing experience. So they leave for the national competition in Colorado tomorrow uh, to go out to compete with other teams from all over the country. So we thought it would be appropriate that we not just recognize their achievements to date, uh, but give them a proper send off and let them know that uh, we're all supporting them 100% as they go out to the national competition. So uh, at this point, I'd like to invite the DPW commissioner Larry Riley to come up and say a few words. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, I was told I'm supposed to get you guys all pumped up for this send-off, so let's hear a little cheer for these two guys. This is a great thing for the DPW. This is a great thing for the DPW. They are part of our team and that's what we're all about. So, with that being said, I want to wish you guys good luck, kick some butt down there, and bring home that trophy to the city of Rockland, the champions. Yes. I do want to make sure that uh, before we make our presentation that I do recognize also Frank Chevry is here with us today and uh, he was one of the founders of the Plymouth County Rodeo. So Frank, thank you very much for being here with us today. So I'm going to ask the commissioner to give me a hand presenting citations to uh, both of these gentlemen. And uh, each citation reads uh, almost identically. And it says, be it known that the mayor of the city of Brockton hereby extends his congratulations to Michael Curtin Jr. and Michael Picanzo in recognition of representing Brockton proudly at the National Snowplow Rodeo. Your skills have earned you victories at the regional and state levels, and we are proud that you will represent Brockton nationally. The city of Brockton is honored to have you as part of our team, and we hope uh, that you will keep us all in mind as you compete representing the City of Champions. I've been with the city for 10 years, but I've been doing snow plowing for close to 30 years. Me and Mike have been doing it the last three or four years together. Oh, people are, people are wonderful when we're plowing. They love us. They really do. You know, they, they don't realize that a truck that size, is, uh, it's not easy to always stop on, on a dime. One guy will do the... Um, Slalom course, he'll drive through it. The other guy will back through. And then, um, same as the compressor, we back up a small compressor. You kind of do it as a team, just a safety and all that. And then um, just to promote more teamwork with us guys. If there's an obstacle course, I will maneuver it with precision and skill. 
If there is a written exam, I will ace it. We have Rocky Marciano, we have Marvin Hagler, now we have Mike Curtin. How does it feel? <laughs> I, I don't think I'm up on their level, but I'll, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> Colorado National Snowplow Rodeo, watch out, because we're coming. We're on to Colorado. What you gonna do when the Brockton DPW runs roughshod on you? I'm talking to you, Colorado. Now, we are going to be watching a special demonstration on how people trapped in a car are ex extracted by the Brockton Fire Department. Man, I am fired up. Let's take a look. Okay, first what we're going to do is, it's a simulation of an accident where someone's trapped inside a vehicle. Now normally, people see an accident and they see firefighters just rushing up to the vehicle and just doing their thing. There's actually a little bit of a process that goes through to make sure that the car is safe for the rescuers and the patients inside. So what they're going to be doing first is putting chalk blocks down, which stabilize the frame of the vehicle. Then they'll pop the tires so they rest right on top of the, the blocking system, which keeps the car from rocking back and forth while they're manipulating the doors and things like that. Uh, the thing that looks like a giant lobster claw, that's, that's called the uh, cutters. Uh, what that does is it cuts the metal, it'll cut the post where the uh, windshield is over by the door. So that what they're doing now is they're covering the glass to keep all the glass inside so that it doesn't come out and create a, a dangerous area. Now normally if someone is inside, they take a blanket or they take a fire coat and they cover that patient and keep them from getting shod with glass. Is this a four-person operation normally? Uh, normally we have more than four people because again, it's a chaotic scene just because it's one car that needs, you know, an operation like this doesn't mean that the other car that's involved needs the same operation. Uh, the more hands, the better. It's, it's like they say, the more the merrier. And during, during this process, I mean, there are people inside in, real, in a real life scenario. You have one, you have one of the fire department personnel uh, actually talking, talking to the victims? Uh, we'll actually have a, a group of guys that are actually doing what they're doing now, working on the car. And what we have left over, we'll have the guys inside the car working on the patients, keeping them calm, keeping them, you know, uh, let them know what's going on, and just getting medical help to them as, as they need it. Um, even a simple crash, the frame of the vehicle, especially the cars built nowadays, the frame of the vehicle could buckle easy and jam the doors closed, where you need to, you know, just something simple as pop the doors. What they're doing now is where the doors come together, it's such a tight spot. So they're putting a halligan in and using that to twist to make what they call a purchase point. It's an opening that gets it open up a little bit more so they can take the spreaders, which Firefight Heenan has. Now he'll, he'll put the tips of those inside and he'll spread those, uh, the door apart a little bit more. And then he'll, get a, he'll close them up, put them, side, put them inside a little bit more spread it more, and then the door will pop right open. The sawzall goes in, rips right through the glass, then they'll take the whole glass out in one piece. Is that a new tool? Uh, it's, it's a tool that we've used uh, many times. Um, it's it's kind of a tool in our arsenal that we've had for years, and it's actually a very, very handy tool. Uh, there have been situations where we've come to a scene and we're using the jaws, and the hose line breaks for, for some odd reason. Uh, it gets pinched on a piece of glass, it gets kinked, something happens and the, it breaks. That sawzall can actually cut through enough metal that'll take that roof off if, if need be. It may not be as strong to take off the door, but it, it has its moments, has its job when, it's, when it needs. Now the, the training that the, the fire department personnel go through, is this, is this something that everybody is, is trained in? Anybody that's on a, in a, on a truck? Everybody does. Uh, e even though it's only carried on just a few of our trucks, uh, everyone is trained on it because you never know where anyone's going to work. You know, someone could be working and on this station one day and they could be detailed out to another station another day because we're short-handed. So everyone in the department is trained. Uh, even in the recruit schools that we have, 
the recruits are trained on it also. So right out of drill school, they come out trained on the uh, hearse tool. All right, it looks like there's a big pair of scissors <laughs> going on that's, over there. <laughs> that's the lobster claw. That's the, uh, the, that's the cutters. So what they're doing now is they're cutting the posts on each of the cars, uh, on each of the uh, sides of the car. Uh, now, this is an older car, so it's not too much of a hazard right now, but with the, old, with the newer cars, you got to watch out for the side impact airbags. Um, that's another issue. Just because the airbag doesn't go off during the accident doesn't mean there isn't a potential for danger while they're cutting the car open. Now, as you can see in, inside the car also, the battery cables, cables have been cut. Uh, so there's, it just minimizes the chance of a, of a spark. Uh, if, if you're cutting through the car as they're doing now and you hit a wire and it touches another wire or a ground and creates a spark, that could create another hazardous area also. So we cut the batteries and you know, make sure any chance of that is, is out. That's a powerful tool. It is. It's a very powerful tool. So now you, this car's ripped apart. You get different pieces uh, lying everywhere. What what happens from there? Like, who who takes care of it? How does that get disposed of? Well, after that, once the patients are gone, in the ambulances are sent to the uh, hospital. We call for a tow, and Lynch is towing. Everett's towing. They'll they'll come out. They'll scoop up the car and on their way. Hi, I'm Ellie. I'm with the Caring Adults team of Brockton's Promise. I've been with Brockton's Promise since it first started on their steering committee. My name is Laurie Morris and I'm director of the BCC After School Program. My name is Stephanie Hu. I'm serving my second year as an AmeriCorps Mass Promise Fellow at the Old Colony Y Big Sister Big Brother Program. My name is Sharice Miles and I am with Massasoit Community College. Caring Adults is one of the five Promise teams of the Greater Coalition of Brockton's Promise. Our team is made up of nonprofits, community leaders, and individuals who are looking to make Brockton a better place by having more caring adults in the lives of young people. We look at mentoring as something that can be informal or formal, whether you're a mentor at a specific program and you decide to devote two hours a week of your time, or whether you're a coach in a program or you're a neighbor looking out for the kids in their community. One of our proudest achievements is our annual mentor recruitment rally and celebration that we hold during the month of January, which is also National Mentoring Month. Stand up, Brockton. Be counted. Invest in your community and give back. Become a mentor. Two hours a week, eight hours a month. That adds up to 96 hours in a year. You can do it. We're counting on you. Be a mentor. Wow, what a great demonstration by the fire department. I had the pleasure of visiting John McGarry, the executive director of the elections office in Brockton. John showed us how voting machines work. These voting machines, which he calls scanners, processes each person's vote so we can get a correct tally. Let's go over to City Hall, the beautiful City Hall, wonderful building. Inside, we'll meet with John. So, John, we're here today at the elections office, and you have the AccuVote scanner test. Walk us through the whole process. October 6th is the special primary for, to replace uh, State Senator Tom Kennedy's uh, seat in, it, uh, in the State House. So, what we are required to do for every election is create what's called a test deck. We take 50 ballots. Uh, in the city election, it's 50 ballots from each ward if there's a ward race. In this case, we have Democrat-Republican ballots uh, with candidates. So it's 50 Democratic ballots, 50 Republican ballots. Because the other two parties do not have anyone running, the state allows us to do five and five of those. So basically what we do is we mark them up. We take a, a physical count of it ourselves and write it down. Then I, each machine I take out, I make sure that the ink supply is good, that the tape is going to last through the election. Then I put in the memory card that everyone uh, is so interested on on election night to get those tapes back from. It's just a large um, 
a, a large, uh, similar to what you use in your camera, a large card like um, you put in a camera or into your computer. Um, you slide it, it goes into the machine, and then if everything tests out right, it, it gets this goes back over and it gets sealed in. I put the memory card in and I run, in this case, 110 ballots through each machine. So one, it proves that the machine is counting correctly and that it's handling the ballots for this particular election. After that, I seal it up. Once I'm, um, I confirm my results, I seal it up, they go back on the shelf and they stay that way until election morning when they go out of here by police officer to each precinct. I do that for every precinct I have. As you can see, I've got uh, 31 machines total, all the machines are tested. Even I have three backups in case uh, there's a problem with the machine during the day and they are also tested. John, one of the things that comes up annually during voting season, during election season, is uh, transient population and what they should know. Tell us a little bit about that. The biggest thing, again, is that if you've moved around or you haven't voted for a while, please call our office and find out, one, if you're registered, and two, where you're registered. Oftentimes, if you move around within the city and you don't re-register to vote, you're going to be at your old address or maybe two addresses ago, depending on how often you vote. It's, it's really important for you to co contact us and confirm where you go to vote so that on election day, you're not running around between precinct and precinct trying to get to the right spot. Uh, I'm sure it's frustrating and you get angry and I don't want to lose you as a voter, but a simple phone call could prevent a lot of that. Just remember that these ballots, and this is one of the test ballots, they have circles in them. It's like taking a test at school. You fill in the circle that you want next to the name. In this case, because I only have one candidate, I split the votes between the candidate and the write-in spot just to verify that the machine is reading, reading them all and just give me a change in number so I don't have just 50 for, for the candidate. Fill in the circle. It's not a check. You can put a check mark. If you put it right in the heart of that circle, the machine will read that with a black pen. But preferably you do what you're asked to do and that is you fill in the circle. Always next to the person you name. If you want to do a write-in, remember to fill in the circle next to the write-in and put a person's name in there. Uh, a hint, if, if you're a good citizen and for whatever reason you go out to vote, you don't like anybody that's on the ballot, the easiest thing to do is to fill in the circle next to the word write in and leave it blank. That's, that's a way of doing a protest vote right? because we don't have um, no preference on any of our ballots. So I would uh, suggest that you uh, remember what it was like being in school and filling in those, those circles when you were taking the, the uh, multiple choice tests. That's it. Behind me is a fire truck. Now, we know there are hoses on it, but what's inside? Oh, you're not going to believe. We're going to take a tour around a truck, around a Brockton fire truck, and see what's inside. Let's check it out. What you're looking at right here is the pump panel. This is where the, uh, the driver, after we get to the scene of the fire, he gets out. And this is where he controls which hoses receive water, which hoses do not receive water, how much pressure they get. It's very important that the firefighters who are at the other end of that line get the proper volume of water and the right amount of pressure to, to do what they have to do, whether they have to reach deep into a building or whether they just need a lot of volume in one in a close area. So it's very this is a very important part of the truck. Uh, it's got a lot of um, you know lights and uh, gauges and. Uh, it's very important that the drivers are very educated uh, in, in the mathematics of pressure. Um, hydraulics. Hydraulics. you, you got to know your, your hydraulics. In this cabinet, we control, control the bigger lights on top. If we have a scene that we really need lit up really well, we can control the big lights from in here. Uh, we have our foam kit on this top shelf. Uh, if uh, we have a gasoline fire, for instance, uh, some sort of um, uh, hydrocarbon fire, we can uh, control it with uh, that nozzle uh, and the foam buckets which are on top of the vehicle. Uh, if you lock yourself out of your car or you lock your, your pet or child in the car, this, we have a lockout kit here. We can uh, get into your car without damaging it. That's uh, very important. Um, we also have these uh, small hoses here. These hoses are what we use to hook to the to hook to the hydrant. They're shorter lengths so that we don't have the long length to the hydrant. We can work with shorter lengths. What size hose is that? Uh, we have a four, these are both four inch hose. One is 33 feet long and the other one is 50 feet long. Coming down here, <coughs> we have our different uh, extinguishers. Of course, the, the truck itself carries a lot of water, but uh, these are specific um, carbon dioxide uh, extinguisher right here. 
and we also have an Ansel extinguisher. It's a dry chemical that we can use on different types of fires, stove fires, electrical fires. Uh, and this is where the driver keeps his, um, his air tank in case he needs it. Uh, usually the driver stays with the truck and doesn't need it, but in case he did, it's there ready to go. If we go out of town, we actually have, the, believe it or not, from town to town, city to city, the size of hydrants are different. So if we have to go out of town, we have different size connections that we can use in those towns. It's very important. I, I don't know why they aren't universal, but <laughs> we make do. A lot of times we go into high-rise buildings. A lot of what you see in, the, in this uh, uh, compartment is, is when we have to go somewhere else. For instance, these two bundles, uh, we call them at the top. If we have to go into a high-rise, we take those bundles in and we co connect to the standpipe system in that building, if the building has a standpipe. Uh, or we can bring that into a building that doesn't have a standpipe and drop the line back, the back end out of the window and someone can hook to that and get us water to where we need it. Uh, we also have these, uh, these are like little backpacks that we fill with water. If we're out of DW and they know there's a little fire but it's far out, you know, we don't want to drag a hose 700 feet if we can just bring a little bit of water and some rakes and, and you know, take care of it that way. So we can carry a good five gallons of water on our back with that. <clears throat> and this bag right here is actually very important. It's with the high-rise bag. It's got everything uh, uh, we would need to hook to that uh, standpipe in the, in the uh, high-rise building. So there are 750 gallons in a truck, and uh, does it make it interesting when you're driving a truck uh, with, with that much water in there? It can. As long as you keep it full, there's less sloshing. Now once you get down, say, say you use half your water and you're driving around and you slam on the brakes, guess what you're going to feel? You're going to feel that, that push of the water because now you're creating a wave inside the tank. So that's why we try to keep it full at all times. Stop, drop, and roll. That's what it's all about. We're going to kick it back to the Caring Adults team. We had some fun in studio while they were recording the testimonials. Let's take a look. Oh, we're, in, we're not filming. Yeah, see the, red, see the red light? No, it's not flashing. It doesn't have to be flashing. It just has to be on. He works here. He knows how it works. I know a thing or two about a thing or two, Gabby. We have somebody else. Oh, wait a minute. That's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, you, you okay, go. What am I saying? Hey, hey look out for the Minneapolis. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, my God. Do this for another few years. They're going to be naming awards after you. I hope so. What kind, of award, what, what kind of award do you want to have named after you? earliest retirement on record. <laughs> <laughs> just go, just go. Caring Adults is one of the five Promise teams in the Coalition of Brockton's Promise that works together around events. <laughs> oh. I was going! Okay, um, where's Amanda? Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. There hey, she here she is. Come on Hi. over here, yeah, yeah. What's going on, Amanda? How you doing? What's up? What's the news? What's the word, Bert? Good. <laughs> Gabby, what's your story? What do you have to tell? <laughs> he's Mr. Dun, dun, he's Mr. 101. Are okay. you smiling when she's doing this? Or straight face? No, you look pissed off. <laughs> that, that always goes so well. They call him Heat Miser. Whatever I touch turns to something in my clutch. I'm too much. Ba -dum -bum -bum. <laughs> ba -dum -bum -bum. I'm crying. Whoa! <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this show as much as we enjoyed covering these fantastic events. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, which includes archived episodes of One North Maine, many election coverage events, and other activities at youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels on one word. For everyone at One North Maine, I'm Jay Miller and we will see you around town. This is one of the greatest moments of my life. Mom, I did it. I am now a Brockton Junior Firefighter. I did it! <laughs>